you all have an agenda. Anything anybody want to add to the agenda? <coughs> Hearing none. A motion to approve. So moved. So moved. Seconded. And seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Conflict of interest. Does anybody have a conflict of interest on any of the items that are on the agenda? Okay. Item number three is, uh, we have a couple of presentations. The first one is the Tuscott River Environmental Protection Association. And we have Virginia Smith, who's going to be giving us uh, presentation, a talk, or whatever. So, Mike is yours. Warden and counselors, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Sufficiently? I'm going to read my presentation because I was told I strictly say what I've given you <laughs> that I told you I was going to say. Humans, for the most part, are responsible for the destruction of habitat for other living and non-living matter. We can ignore our responsibility to protect the environment, or we can do something about it. We have neglected our environment for too long by degrading it, rearranging the soil and protective coverings, by destroying animal and plant habitat, by adding chemicals and excess nutrients to our water, and worse still, by throwing unwanted materials or objects into our ocean, rivers, and lakes. It seems that one of the only means for regulating such unhealthy behaviors, besides education, is to pass laws and bylaws which deliver consequences for violating and destroying the natural habitat. In keeping with the Council's strategic plan and community sustainability plan, TREPA proposes a policy that will protect shoreline buffers buffer zones. This refers to a 12 meter or 40 foot area from high water mark on any lake, river, or body of water to any structure or developed portion of a lot. Infilling or removal of material should not be permitted within the zone except for minimal disturbance or incidental events that may occur over time. The natural flora and fauna in the buffer zones are to remain undisturbed, except for modest wharves and or boat launches. We encourage the development of small boat launches or access routes to areas where people frequently enter a river or lake. Moderate thinnings, not clear cutting, and sound ecological practices designed to minimize disturbance to the natural shoreline are acceptable, i.e. no infilling. There are many indigenous species of flora, fauna, and marine life in the Argyle area, which are in fact at risk or in decline due to human interference, including wood turtles, frogs, trout, snakes, songbirds, many native grasses, sedges, rushes, coastal plain, flower plain <coughs> flora, such as the pink coreopsis and Plymouth gentian, and water pennywort. The Tuscott River watershed is an extremely important ecosystem and is representative of the type of diverse system that must be healthy in order for humans to remain healthy. There are actions that individuals can take, such as keeping shoreline zones as wild as one can, by minimizing alterations and construction zones in an area. Other suggestions include avoiding the use of fertilizer and the mowing of lawns near shorelines, creating a single path near waterways using chips or permeable materials, redirecting runoff or slowing its flow, and building modest floating docks. We can avoid building walls or barriers near shorelines. We should be careful what we put down our drains, and we should not be setting grass fires. We should be keeping off-road vehicles off our wetlands and riverbeds. As counselors, you can pass bylaws and amendments that reflect this approach to preservation. We certainly have a new perspective on the value of fresh, clean water in our area.
We need compliance from visitors to the community and developers and builders who do not live here but profit from the work that they do without sharing our loss of our vital natural waterfront areas. The municipality of Argyle has many reasons to be proud. We have an excellent waste removal system, an excellent adopt a highway cleanup program. We have attractive historical museums holding our records and our many treasures. We can be proud of having one of the only remaining independent general stores in all of Canada. We can be proud of our fishing and agricultural industries. We can be proud to have one of the only rural observatories in Canada. We can be proud of having one of the longest lasting and as well one of the first community villages where First Nations people and Acadians lived peacefully and cooperatively. We can be proud to have one of the largest renewable energy wind farms in Nova Scotia. And I'm certain that we can be proud of our new green administrative building when it's built for our future governance. So let's be proud and take the steps necessary to protect our many valuable waterways. And I have with me a guest scientist who is working a general, um, he is our, our guide with TREPA. John Solos, and in my car I have um, a new brochure that Treva has has printed out on riparian uh, buffer zones. Well, we're calling them shoreline buffer zones for um, the benefit of the understanding of of average the average person who wouldn't know the scientific term. So what we are asking is that you we already know there are provincial laws in place regarding the 40 meter zone, but we don't believe that these, um, this is being carried out um, in the Argyle area, or nor is it being carried out in the municipality of Yarmouth, although the municipality of Yarmouth has now proposed um, uh, some kind of legislation regarding that matter. And, um, and a manner in which uh, developers and contractors will be informed about the importance of not building down to the shoreline. Because obviously, if a client asks them to do so and is paying for it, and there, is no, and there are no consequences for doing so, they will do so. Um, so it's our, it, we feel it's in the best interest of the entire community to have some means for controlling that. And uh, I, <clears throat> I, have, I have an interest, and it's not really a personal interest. Uh, I do the water testing on Kegashuk, and uh, I think many of you know that I'm an avid person in the water wherever, um, paddling or swimming or scuba diving. <laughs> I'm in the water a lot, and um, I was one of those people who lost my water to the dry, lost water in two locations to the dry climate last year. And despite what Donald Trump thinks, I believe we have climate change and that we all have to be prepared in the long run for that and do what we can. So, okay. and so if you have questions related to the science, um, John is here to at answer those. Just, I just, yeah, go ahead. I just, I just need a reference to the measurements again. I, when you first said the measurements for the buffer oh. zone. Yes, it's. I'm sorry. I said. 40 meters. Okay, I said 40 meters the second time. Yeah. It's 12 meters or 40 feet. 40. Sorry, okay. Richard. You're right. I did misspeak. Uh, misspoke uh, during the, mm -hmm. my extra. Additional information. Does anybody else have any questions? Is there any uh, municipalities within the province that are enforcing these regulations or one similar to it? I think that Halifax may be, and I also think Anaganish. I was told today um, by somebody from the David Suzuki Foundation that those two communities in particular had signed on to the Blue Dot campaign, which, and one of the stipulations is the right to clean water. And I believe that those two municipalities are, Richard, but I, 
I don't know. John would maybe know. Um, I was talking to Brad today, and he was saying that now um, when people in Yarmouth Municipality come in to see um, Roger, the development officer, um, he makes people quite aware if they have shoreline property that they're not allowed to be playing games within that 40 feet of the shoreline. Because the bylaw went through in 2014, and it's good, and I'm sure it's made some difference, but it's not making enough difference yet. So this challenge of the that it'd be really great if the province could strengthen its own regulations that make it a longer, slower path. Yeah. Sounds like the onus is going to be on municipalities in the initial fight. Um, I know when the bylaw and Yarmouth first got discussed, like I think Brad knows the history better than I do, but I think there was some serious debate about it maybe eight or nine years ago. And then I'm not sure if it's the green water up the Carlton or not, but when they finally came up with their bylaw, they had two or three public hearings, and they were preaching to the converted. I was amazed. Nobody was there to scream and yell against it. There were some questions about how do you enforce it, but Brad said, you gotta start somewhere, and I agree with it. You know, um, if you have a bylaw, you can make the contractors aware of it, and they say, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Enforcement, uh, the folks <coughs> in the Yarmouth Municipality are dealing with this now, and environment is supposed to talk to them in September now. It was gonna be April, and it but it is, as you said, a, a provincial law. Is that what you said? Yes. But yet they're not enforcing it. The provincial stuff is weak. Yeah, the municipal. Claire has something too. Now I can't remember the details. Oh yes. It's, it's a bit. Yeah, the other municipalities is more definite. But yeah. Um, Municipalities don't have the teeth the province does. So mm -hmm. the province needs something a bit stronger. Right. Yeah. And education, because I'm not sure how many developers or even consider it or. Right. That's one thing when we talked about this with the Urban Council, I think one of the things John said, John Cunningham, was we need education. And we did have a project at that time. I ran around to every excavation contractor in the municipalities of Yarmouth, Argyle, and Clare. Every, to every school in the tri counties with this little Bible from Mercy told me, yeah, there's probably someone kicking around here too. Um, healthy lakes and wetlands for tomorrow, and I sort of indicated the pages of the contract that were of interest. And we mass mailed that brochure, which has just been updated through every post office, which is with a major sort of a population in the Tuscan Ketchum. And maybe that had some effect. That was the education part. Um, and maybe that's one reason there was less resistance. But, um, Still, it happens. I think one of the things we need to do is reach beyond Yarmouth, Argyle, and Clare. Some of the contractors come from down Shelburne Way or up Dickey Way, so maybe we can get the message more away. It's pretty little biblical. <laughs> I've got a box of brochures in the car. Right? So do I. Bring it in. <laughs> shall we bring it in? Well, Where, shall we bring one in? Probably not a bad idea to have. Okay. You know, yeah. Where would you like me to leave it? Yeah. At least, uh, you know. There's okay. Where would you like me to leave it um, so I won't interfere with the remainder of your meeting? You can leave it with me. Virginia will put it in. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And if anybody's got any questions about that, you guys pay for most of the work that we're trying to do. Basically, we're seeing Kangashooks to Blue Lake. Um, and the upper right hand corner, or the upper left hand corner, is chlorophyll levels, which sort of is those little green guys in the water. Um, not big plants, little stuff. And in the summer, last summer, it was quite high in Kagesho. Phosphorus levels are still extremely low. That's sort of the lower one on the left, which is really good, except it looks to me as if maybe it's creeping up a little bit each year. There's quite a bit of cottage development there, and if there's a bit more shoreline protection, maybe that'll help deal with it. Um, I've also put in color, because that's another thing that limits these little green guys in the water. If you've got dark water like Tuscan, you're not going to see so much of that because the light doesn't get through. Kagashook is a nice clear lake. So it's more vulnerable than that standpoint, too. And there's, I think, between Kagashook and Canoe Lake, there's coffee pots in there, too. So just, I guess that's an argument in favor of getting the word out on the shoreline. The Tuscan River itself, it's like vinegar tea. It's dark water, but still the same sort of thing applies. There's rare plants around. Maybe the nutrients will do damage too. Um, 
uh, but it's maybe a little less vulnerable to folks. And if you have green water, of course, good property values. Is is Kedjicho the most developed lake within our municipality? Well, that's a good question. I'm not sure, but I just know that I paddle a lot of areas, and I've just noticed a lot of growth on Kedjishuk, and especially new houses. And there are a number of them I've seen down below the uh, 40 foot. Well, not a number. But I don't want to exaggerate, but I have seen new places below the 40 foot zone. So. Well, I'm as guilty as anybody. I built 16 years ago in Argyle, and I didn't even know anything about a buffer mm -hmm. zone. So my lands, my lawns, down to the, where as far as it can go. You're not alone. Well, I, I realize that. Well, I that's what that. I'm saying. People obviously are not aware. Mink Lake is not not, not there are other lakes that are where where this is happening. Mink Lake is probably a good example, but that's not in Argyle. It's still, it's it's a real concern. Well, I shouldn't say that. I got a bit of five-foot buffer of blackberry bushes, but that's not 40 feet. Just as long as you know where your septic is going, because that's another uh, offender, if you yeah, know. That, yeah. that goes uphill in the opposite direction on a great big ugly mound. And <laughs> Thank you, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's another nice thing about having all those bushes while the water goes. Somebody's got their septic tank down below, and if they have a problem, well, the bushes will help suck out that nutrient before it gets in the lake. Okay. That's why we say leave the greens, don't take them all out for a sandy beach that you don't really need. Okay, anybody else? No, yeah. Um, okay. I can just confirm with you that the draft um, land use and municipal uh, planning strategy that will be presented to the Planning Advisory Committee does include provisions that would be worded similar, if not exact to the the Yarmouth provisions uh, as we share we share the plan yeah. and that was right. one of the areas that uh, had been raised as an issue for the municipality so so that's the start yeah. that doesn't address enforcement but it just it just mm. addresses the, the question this would be Brad need any help for public education because some people will resist um, I don't mind doing what we can to help educate right. uh, because yeah sometimes just a lack of awareness Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. For the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And, if you, and yes, yep. please. Okay. And Chris will, you will look after that. It's okay. Thank you, Jim. Okay. So now we have another presentation. And this is from the Comité d'Action de Parents de Wedge Board. And we have Terry Lee O'Connell, and you're on. I'm on? Good, okay. Um, thank you for accepting us today. Um, as you know, I'm Terry Lee, and I'm here on behalf of um, an action committee that was started back in March um, in Wedgeport. Um, so it kind of based that, not sure if you're aware, but for more than a decade, um, there's been the school committee has been asking for a new school for Wedgeport. Um, I actually didn't realize it had been going on that long, but there's been communication. We have written communication way back to about 2009 and, and further with the Department of Education regarding Wedgeport and the community. Um, the school is, I believe, 57 years old, so it's been built a long time. There's a lot of things wrong with it, and I can go over the kind of list of deficits, but. Um, and summarizing, there's a lot of things wrong with the school and um, they've been promising either a new school or major renovations for the past 10 years. Uh, <clears throat> problem with it is they're not getting the major renovations because they're holding off for the new school. And I don't know if you're aware, but there's been a new list of schools announced and Wedgeford was once again omitted. So the CSAP had kind of had enough trying to communicate that way with the Department of Education. Therefore, they um, requested to form an action committee and they asked myself, and there is four other parents. Yes, four or five, me and Kelly. 
five um, on this committee and we have kind of got together and we have done a press release and a media release. We have met with the CSA, we've met with the CSRP, we've done meetings with the community and other parents. We've gotten a list of the deficits of the school, kind of what the concerns are, what's wrong. Um, and we've brought that forth to the media and again to um, the new uh, now Minister of Education uh, and our, our local um, candidates or representatives as well. And we've spoken to them and they're all aware. When we spoke to the new, we have a new uh, arrangement meeting to go with the new Minister of Education and he at the time um, what well, was Zach Churchill was not part of that. He was going to look into why, as we look back at the communication that says which port will be considered, which port will be considered, which port is never considered. Um, <clears throat> so we kind of ask why are we admitted? Um, we know we have small numbers, but there was a, a research done back in 2013 uh, by a Real Sasso, and um, he did an assessment what's wrong with the school, what needs to be replaced, how much would it cost to replace it, how much would it cost to repair it, and what would be the projected numbers of enrollment increase if a new school was built. And the conclusion from that independent research was that definitely a new school was needed, um, that it would cost pretty much, I think at the time it was seven million for renovations and 10 millions for replacement. So not a whole much more. And that the res renovations would only extend the life of the school about 15 years because it still had so many deficits. So that was presented. And again, it was said that it would be considered and it would kind of go from there. Um, the enrollment at Wedgeport is starting to decrease. Um, and as a small French community, we're starting to get concerned that we're going to assimilate into the majority English language. There's less enrollment, there's less kids speaking French, there's less French, and we've seen other communities around that when your school goes, sometimes your French Acadian community um, goes as well. So that's one thing we don't want. We've also seen in other places of the province the whole motto of if you build it, they will come. And they have built French, small French schools in places where there was only 12 people and in two years it's went up to 200. So the projected numbers show that if you actually was to get a new school that the likelihood of our numbers going up and there's a lot of ayant droits, which I'm not sure what that is in English, but there's a lot of ayant droits, which are students that are, um, that have the right to study in French that we're losing to to some of it, to English schools to French immersion schools to so there's a large amount there that was thought that we could be getting but we're not drawing to the community because the school is falling apart and a lot of people want schools that have better technology and whatnot um, and so. We've even spoken to like real estate agents that said like you know new schools bring up the real estate of the property. It helps the community. It helps um, you know the infrastructure and the, the just the businesses and, and and things like that. So as parents, we decided we were going to try to push forward and we're going to see why this has not been um, of note. Wedgeport School has been the top of the CSAP list for a new school for the past five years. Therefore, they have been number one for the school needing to be replaced in the entire CSAP, and we're still not getting a new school. So our ask of here was to kind of talk, because we're hoping to get different push from different sectors and different areas, that you know we want the CSAP to go forward and speak to department. We have the CSA writing letters. We have community members writing letters. We have parents you know, writing letters and talking, and our hope was to have support from municipality as another area of going to say, look, we recognize, you know, our community is being disadvantaged, they're being ignored, and it's it's not right, and we're not going to kind of tolerate that anymore. So that's why I'm here. I don't know if I'm missing anything. Maybe if you ask questions, I'll notice if I kind of missed anything. Um, yes. I was looking at one of your your map here 
You show Little River Harbor, Camose Hill, and Pigney's Point, primarily Acadian communities. The students in those communities, where are they going now? What's the trend? Um, in the rapport, we do have them. Uh, Wedgeport is mostly at Wedgeport School, but uh, P Pigney's Point and Little River, we've lost them to a lot of the other schools. Um, and when I talk about the, uh, and this was something in the past that I didn't realize, that Pigney's <coughs> Point was predominantly French. And if you speak to any older members of Pigney's Point, they're all French. And at one point, they lost their school, and the people were given a choice to go to Wedgeport or to go to Arcadia. And they were convinced to go to Arcadia that it would be better for them. And since then, go to Pigney's Point and find someone my age that speaks French. They've totally lost their French language. I didn't even realize Pigney's Point was French, because everyone I know was English. So. Um, it just goes to show you just the difference of kind of switching the schools out and then suddenly, but anyone that's like my grandparents' age or whatnot, they're all French, but our generations are all English. And they all go predominantly to like Plymouth, um, Arcadia or, or those areas, but they're all students that could potentially come to Wedgeport, as well as the district of Wedgeport goes all the way to Stars Road. If you're wondering why were you talking to Zach Churchill, if you're because we have to the end of Stars Road is Wedgeport's district. Um, so there are students from Yarmouth that do go to Wedgeport, and a lot of them go to Belleville. But there's a lot of Aondrois in Yarmouth that we could be attracting, and a lot of them are going to immersion schools. It's not that they don't want to study in French; they just choose different schools. Yeah. Uh, looking at that, uh, you said that CSSAP has had it, has this the Wedgeport School for the past uh, uh, five years. Five years. Uh, to have, do you, do you know if they've built any other schools in the system in the last five years? Yes, but not French but schools. But what? Why? Oh, oh, but what? Not. But not French schools. But, if it says up, it would need to be French. No, no says up schools. The, the province has built new schools. I'm sorry, but not the says up. Eh? No, but oh. it's not. It's it's not school like it's the province that decides who gets a new school. Right, of course. And therefore, they've they've given new schools, I believe, to the says up and renovated old schools. But there's never been a new school built for yeah. Um, and there's been uh, there's been renovations and things, but not a new school built. Um, other than uh, there's been new schools, but never on the CSAP list. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I want to know. Yes. Are they giving any reasons why? No. They're not saying because the enrollment is down. They're not. Give, they're not giving. They're not. Any and this the last communication was that was kind of my thing. I said because I had write a letter that that just came this January mm -hmm. from Karen Casey at the time that says. It kind of says the same thing every time, but in summary, it basically says, um, we have understand, we we will consider, and we will put Wedgeport as part of our plan or you know our physical plan, and we will let you know. And then when we asked, she did say, we have certain um, uh, strategies and we have certain factors that where we pick what school, when we build a school, and my response was, well, what are those factors? Where are we? What is it that we're missing? That why are you not building? But no one's answering us. Okay. No, so they can't. They're not telling us. Okay, is there? <clears throat> let's say that the Westport School was. The, it's 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 you, you can't use it anymore. Are there French schools in the area that can handle the the, the population of of that school? No. So that's they're not looking at that. They're not, I'm just trying to figure no. out here what. No, because we've what thought of that too. Are. Belleville is already overflowing. They're, right. They're. I mean, I think next year Belleville. I mean, they're looking at two maternelle classes. They're looking at two grandier classes. Wow. They can't barely handle what they have now. So, right. yeah. um, they'd have nowhere to put. Yeah. So Belleville is quite going on there they wouldn't be able to because i thought of that too i thought they're going to close us down there's only a hundred yeah. students they're so going to but there's nowhere to absorb it no so it needs we, so we it need needs place. its own and that's been you know it's not but i mean out of speculation we figure it's to do with the small numbers yes. but saying that the minority language is still just because we're a small number you still deserve the same right as the majority and you still deserve to have equal education opportunities so if they're building new schools for the english school boards and they're not doing anything for the french 
that's being discriminatory towards having small populations. Of course our numbers are smaller. We're a minority group, you know, but it doesn't mean, but it does show the projection of the, that, because they had looked at other schools and once they build new, how many new people, they had said that had the school been built when they did that initial assessment, I think it started maybe in 2009, if the school had been built like in 2013, that they had figured by now it would be almost up to 150. Darn right. So they had, they, you know, the projection shows that if you build, and like I said, they, the CSAP has a lot of examples of schools starting in trailers with like 12 students up, you know, to 200. Yeah, and there's the um, so, um, the one in Bridgewater, which was in the name? Yeah, Rive Sud. Like that one there, they just, I mean, it's in Bridgewater. Who would think a CSAP would work in Bridgewater? But there was people there who were saying, no, there's French people we want to study. And that school is overflowing. They're full capacity. It's it's boomed out. People are going from everywhere. They, they like, you know, it's... The, the the enrollment is is huge and we have a parent that's actually at Wedgeport that when they moved to Wedgeport that's where they came from and she said the school's amazing, you know. Uh -huh. So anybody eight. else? As usual, we're gonna have to fight to the teeth to get something. And I know, and I think that's why they kind of pulled in an action with parents that we could fight differently than what the CSAP and the CSA was Absolutely. been able. But we've decided that we're not going to let this go and that, you know, we deserve and it's better for the entire community. And we're looking at talking to the federal government to get funding for a whole Saint Communautaire like we have at PEB, where we could get a Grandi or where we could get a Garderie, where we could get all that. So, I mean, we've spoken to the federal government as well to try to get that because we think that it would really do well in the community if we can kind of get that going. But I feel it's going to be a fight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was just kind of, that's what I was going to say. I think that you guys are on the right track. Because if you don't say anything, you're never going to move up on that list. No. And parents have a tremendous amount of power when it comes okay. to, you do, <laughs> trust me, you do. Yeah, <laughs> you do. And I think that the more support you can get, the more letters of support, the better it, the squeaky wheel in this case right. is going to get. Yeah, you know? and I think then that's kind of where we're hoping and we're, you know, we have a meeting later with kind of members of the community that have businesses and things like that to say, mm -hmm. look, this will even help grow the community and to try to get it from all the different angles. And your media right. as well. That's and the media, important. we've got another yeah. one coming out. Yeah, I mean, we were, we went on CBC, we had an mm -hmm. interview on CBC, mm -hmm. both French yeah. and English, Radio Canada, and we did the locals, but it's going to die down, I'm sure, for a bit, but we're going to come in with another wave afterwards, like. So we got so. the bridge into Red Island. And that's what, you know, that and a school, like a new school and thing, and, you know, even the Saint Communautaire, when they got parents together, a couple years later it was built. Mm -hmm. Like, you kind of have to, you, you do have to push. So long. Uh, first off, thanks for your presentation, Terry. Um, just to add to the presentation, I've, I've personally done a walk around the school, and oh, yeah. the list of deficiencies would take, I don't know how many pages, it's, it's not a joke, it's not you know somewhat of a complaint it's it's a real issue it's definitely a problem and uh, you know this is something that's been mulled over for some time and we will have our hands full when I should say when this new school gets built uh, because we we all know that it, it will potentially be an issue at this table for uh, the ownership of the school uh, or if, if something gets built somewhere else uh, you know that there's there's a potential issue there. However, it's been it's been said in the community that you know, because of the headache we may have, you know, that there may be varying reasons how implicated we want to get into this. But I mean, if there's anything as the council I've felt through this group, I can't speak for the whole group, is that what's more important than your children's education and our culture locally. So, dealing with problems is our job. It, it's what we do every day at this council table, and I think getting a new school is should be priority number one. And uh, you know, what to do with the old one if if Whatever outcome comes, you know, if, if another school is built somewhere else and there is a school to take ownership of, you know, we'll, we'll deal with that then. What's most important is, is the future for our communities. At least that's how I feel. Um, Thank you. And on the second component, I have been hearing it more and more, the, the, the wave of push you guys have been applying. Uh, business members, with the, the topic you touched on, on business members saying, you know, economic development, it, it may help. It, it, it really would. I've, I've spoke to a couple of people, aspects I may not have thought of. 
uh, I won't get into that this evening, but people will kind of say, you know, if it attracts a few more people to the region, it will help uh, certain businesses in the area out. So. Well, we had spoken, I never thought of it that way, but a real estate agent spoke to me and said, I sometimes have a hard time selling houses in Wedgeboard because of the school. Mm -hmm. She said, and in other areas that have new school, people are more likely to move, real estate goes up. And we had never even thought of that angle until she had mentioned it. And I'm like, really? She's like, I have a hard time. And it, she said, people will mention the school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. It's been something I've been speaking with, with our representative at the CSAP for some time now, but uh, there was never such a public push until your group was created. I'm hearing more, like, without me instigating the conversation, I'm hearing more buzz about it in the community. So keep up the good work. And as, as your local counselor where the school is located, that is, that is my district. So if there's anything I can do to help, you know where to find me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so, so that we're clear, you're, you're asking council for letter of support what what exactly yeah is it even that if we're like we're asking other people like even a letter to say you know or or some type of support coming kind of separate than us so that they're getting mm -hmm. it from other areas and not just the same because as of now it's really only came from csap and i'm sure they're thinking of course you want to know new school so does everybody you know mm -hmm. but it's more than just that like we have like if you see the proof that we have from the deficits and the, the studies and the communication and how far it's been going back, it's it's really, and even when we had spoke to, to Zach, he couldn't, he was like, why hasn't it been done yet? So even he was kind of baffled at to the reason. Now, whether or not we're going to get a response from him now is a different story. But Sorry. that was prior to becoming uh, Minister of Education. So. Uh, but we had thought maybe, yes, maybe, uh, you know, a, a separate push so that we have it coming from different areas. So maybe even a letter, you know, kind of drafted or kind of like us saying that, you know, your concern and, and, and there's which board and, and that kind of stuff in coming from our, our counselors might kind of help. And perhaps go directly to the, the Minister of Education, which yes. is Zach now. Minister of exactly. Education, yeah. Oh, yeah, yes. exactly, to kind of have it that way. Okay. No other questions or comments? We thank you very point. much. Thank you. Well, maybe we we'll should have a motion, a, a motion for the letter. And, and that's something we can probably do later on in our agenda. That's typically what you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually you would do okay. that after. Thank you. Thank you. So, very good presentation. Thank you very, very much for coming great to call, the meeting. Great calls. Great calls. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, so. We can add that to six C. I guess six C. Yes. So now we're at uh, business arising from the minutes. The senior safety program. Let's see here. Lost my. Okay, so business we just from the heard me. Business arising. Yes, or? yes, yeah, business rising, and it's the uh, uh, safety senior program evaluation. No business arising. No. So no. there's a, a document before that. Document. Oh, right there. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Which includes the senior safety program. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so you were right all along. You were right all along. That's right, right there. That's yeah, what right I was there. reading right there yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the senior safety pro program request for evaluation is on the agenda. So we'll just that's the next step. Okay. And previous agenda <laughs> topics for the next meeting, uh, we do have a meeting set up with Gail uh, regarding the Nikhil van. I believe it's tomorrow actually. It's tomorrow afternoon. So that will obviously after that conversation, we'll bring that to council. 
garbage collection cost is completed, but there's um, there's been we're just double checking the numbers, and we haven't been able to finish. Um, we uh, due to uh, uh, you know conflicting priorities, and so so that I imagine will come as soon as as soon as possible. We do have a, a staff vacancy, uh, not vacancy, but a, a leave situation that okay. is. Uh, impacting that, and so East Pubnico Playground, uh, we're still dealing with some. Oh, sorry, I'm thinking. That's the wrong one. East Pubnico Playground uh, has not been uh, discussed as of yet, but the notice of motion was at the last meeting to look into what our options might be. So that has that has not been uh, completed as of yet. Okay. Any questions? Okay, the council priority progress report. And there is an attachment. So there is still 4A, which is the actual request. For the senior safety. That's not on my agenda here. Am I not? Am I missing that? 4A. 4A, sorry, yes. Okay. Sorry, I was I was putting that with the uh, business arising. Okay, right. So we need a motion to accept. Correct. To I I'd like to move that uh, we uh, ask staff to bring up the uh, safety uh, senior safety coordinator program evaluation report. I guess I had put on my on my request. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we do that. Please. Okay, seconder for that. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Any questions? Just, just for clarity on the motion, this is an about. Obviously, the safety coordinator is evaluated as a person. This is not the evaluation of the person. It's this is the evaluation of the program. Thank you. Program. Just want to be clear yes. on that because any sort of evaluation for HR, we wouldn't be doing That's right. in open camera. Uh, but uh, and would be my, you, I wouldn't need a council motion to do that. Um, however, it, the program review is so, absolutely yeah. in the control of, mm -hmm. of council. Yeah. Okay. So if you're if you're all clear Question. with that. Question been called. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contraminded. Carried. Now the council priority progress report. So you've all seen this. Looks like the wet sport one is moving along. Fly. Yeah. Fly. Is there any work going on right now? Is there actual? Uh, there are test pits being still, done for yes. sure. Yeah, we we continue to increase our sign offs. I did speak with the province of Nova Scotia regarding the timing. Mm -hmm. uh, they've said that they've loosened a bit of the deadline on the other end. Uh, loosened meaning you know months. If you have a good reason uh, to extend the funding, uh, you can do so. So that's good news for that project as well. We're going to go under the, you know, we're going to hit it as if the deadline was March, but um, it does give us a little bit more leeway. The numbers of, of uh, people signed up has, has climbed quite a bit over the year. Do you, I don't know if you know off the top of your head, Atlanta, what does that happen? It, it's getting closer to 44. Oh, well, so do you have eight or do you have 10? No, it's, it's in the 30s. Oh my God. I, I do have that information. Great idea, great. Or was that 29 a while ago? Yeah. Better than I thought. Yeah. So that for a while it was slow. We were worried at first a little bit that we yeah. might have to do, you know, more of a public uh, yeah. you know, push like Facebook, social media, use those things. And there are a few community members I know our, our, well, our retired bank manager, Philip, uh, took it upon himself to post it on his Facebook, and, and yeah. that really actually added help. Good. We have 27 signed contracts as of, I would assume, today. We, we better than that. That's, that's, yeah. that that's, that, that's possible. I may have miscounted, and you know, I'm just going by the, um, I'm going by the information in front of me, and obviously, I if it was 29, I thought it was 29, and a couple of weeks ago, I guess it, 
it might it might have been 27 yeah so some of them have the detailed design but not necessarily contract sign so yeah. it's uh anyway that's good it's good progress yeah. mm -hmm. okay no more questions on the re on the uh, report okay, other business Nakio board member appointment <laughs> I was looking for it. I don't see it. I, I don't know if, if I should refresh this because I don't seem to have everything on mine here. Refresh. There it is. Yes. Okay. Okay, go I ahead. I would like yeah. to make a motion um, that Mr. Aubrey Hilliard uh, serve on the Nikhil board, replacing um, Hayden Landry. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Conch my nay. Carried. Council meeting, summer adjournment. We don't generally schedule meetings for July and August. No, we meet, we don't meet on our regular okay. Tuesday. No. Uh, routine, but right. we almost always meet at least once in those two months. That's right, as needed, and yes. we do provide advertising prior to that. Right. So yeah. I'll make a motion that we, I guess, we could cancel our our council meeting committee the whole and regular council for July and August, and I guess meet if if needed. If needed, I guess. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussions? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Contraminded. Carried. Okay, letter to the Minister of Education as per the uh, presentation that we just had. So moved. Second. Uh, uh, moved and seconded. Could yes, I have question. A question on that. Um, does what does it involve, and I, just for information, I'm not, I'm going to vote for a motion, but what does an old school involve, Alana or Chris, uh, involved to the, to, to the municipality? Can, can you kind of... I, I can explain that for you and, yeah. and for those watching is any, any school built prior to 1982 is owned by the municipal, in, in the municipality of Argyle, is owned by the municipality of Argyle. So, um, some of you would have dealt with the closure of the SAR school. Uh, the Amiros Hill school was the same situation. The Argyle school, the Quinnan school, all of those schools um, uh, came back to our ownership. And in every instance, we found a buyer for that, for that school. Um, in other instances, um, they get demolished and in other is instances that get substantially renovated to, to do whatever, whatever. So what's concerning is, of course, the CSAP is making a lot of the decisions around the school and around its condition, thinking it will be replaced. But in the meantime, every year that goes by, the, the condition of the school that we own is degraded considerably. And so, so you know, it's, it's, those decisions are not made municipally. And so um, that's the way it works with these schools um, and that's that's been the history unfortunately and um, you know if they build in the same location then that's a non-issue yeah. because then you know it'll be demolished and it'll be built in the same location more than likely it'll be in a different location if they build new yeah. so we'll be we'll be dealing with that okay. so there's um, that's the implication. yeah there's, <coughs> there's, there's financial implications to that and I know that the UNSM and the AMA have pushed very hard to have the province um, take over um, some of those costs of demolition. Um, I know my own personal suggestion at the time was to is was to give um, uh, a demolition grant to the municipal units based on a square footage cost, and if the municipality decided to do something different with it, then it could utilize that money to do something different. But it would be on them. It would be their responsibility, or they can demolish it with the money that they have. Um, all those ideas floated, but I don't. None of them landed anywhere. 
Um, the, the Premier, which is still the current Premier, uh, did make a statement that he'd be willing to support financially, provided that it was all of them. And so what that essentially does is, you know, HRM, when HRM, when a, a school closes an HRM, the value of the property is far greater than the cost of demolition. Right. But in rural Nova Scotia, that's not, mm -hmm. that's not, not the often case. the case. So we're at a bit of a stalemate on the issue. In the meantime, until there's a decision, we have to face the, the possibility that we will be yeah. having to deal with this school that hasn't been retrofitted in how long. So Whatever happened on that, and if you don't want yeah, me, Mr. Chair, like the, the Yarmouth uh, Junior High, <coughs> they're probably building there again, so the province would have taken care of that old school? Or do you know, I mean? For some reason, that school was not owned by the town. Oh. There was a, there was, I think it, it used to be another. Okay, school. school. Right, that's, that's right. And so, so the ownership was not the town, and therefore. Oh, I get you they made the decision to demolish. The high school, the Vikings, the old Vikings right. high school is owned by the town of Yarmouth. Yes. That's why. And so they, they have a decision to make on that property, I whether to you. demolish or sell. And, and, I got you. And so, yeah. Thank you. I should have clarified that we do already own it, but I just meant in the future, we have the potential of still owning it, right? If, if yeah, they no. build a school somewhere else, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, no. the likelihood of, of sale, you know, is, you never know. Right? It's uncertain. There, I, I should mention there's been interest from the business community. Yeah. Uh, you know, how serious that interest is, I don't know. If there's various things to look at. The playground um, on the, on near the property is uh, is in excellent shape. There's yeah. a ball field there. There's a soccer field there, and we've pers not personally, but as a council, we've renovated the tennis court to yeah. uh, an amazing standard now so uh, there'd be an interesting conversation to say the least uh, mm -hmm. if, if a school was to be built however as I mentioned to uh, Terry when she did our presentation it should be if it's not it should be you know a, a high priority on our list because as she mentioned what what matters more than our culture and, and with the numbers and the report she has it's quite clear what happens when schools like that uh, just the Pinkney's point story is actually uh, an interesting story because what she says is truthful for, for the language in, in business point anyone uh, you know from I'm not saying there's none but it's just anyone from the older era is, is primarily French whereas now they lost it and I'm sure that was a contributor I factor. had no idea that was the situation because the people yeah. I know from Pigney's point are French like yeah. oh from my age range and people really? I fish yeah. with like the older people well, but the so younger English, gen I didn't realize anyone my age is definitely English from Don't right. I sure. had no idea that that and not 100% but darn close. And um, if anybody wants to see a worst case scenario of what can happen with the school we used to own, drive the lower I got. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Okay. Right. That's right. So yeah, I mean, some, law, some right. good stories and there's some horrible stories. Yeah. Anyway, we have a motion on the floor. Question. Question call for. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Contraminded. Carried. Oops. Correspondence and for information, we have a letter from Hope, a thank you letter. Department of Health, Cancer Unit, unit uh, Response Letter, Western Counties Regional Library, minutes of March the 16th, the Red Couch Tour. Public Point Trail Association Letter and Department of Transportation Infrastructure Renewal Communication Response Letter, which we had that. Any questions, any discussion on any of those? I, I just, I'd like to comment on the, on the public point. Thank you, letter. So it's been, uh, this year has been going really well. Uh, we finished phase two, they're working on phase three. Uh, we've had, you know, groups come and clean the beach. Uh, group from Shelburne that came down and if you read the, the, the letter, mm -hmm. and then the yeah. uh, yes. DFO and locals uh, one other day, and uh, so yeah, and uh, they're, they're building phase three now, and we were originally thinking that phase three was only gonna be like a, a little trail, but uh, we've got enough resources uh, with all the, the in-kind that we get between backhoes and all the gear um, to, you know, to, to make phase mm -hmm. three the same same as, as, as the others, so it'd be good. So that's great. Yeah. Uh, 
in all, it's probably about three, four, five, you know, somewhere around four or five kilometers and when it's all done. So you could go down there and, you know, do a loop for probably, you know, six or seven kilometers, you know, yeah, using the, one of the roads, that, the first road that goes uh, to the west of where the windmills are, mm -hmm. and then you could take phase, I guess it'd be phase three, down the end of the point to phase two, and then do phase one, which is on the other side of the harbor. So right. Right. The point. Very, very good. We yeah. had a, a class that went on a class trip that went to the village and then they went on the on the trail afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. So that's now being included in their class trip. And I mean, think it's a school in Yarmouth and they're going to Pubnico for their class yeah. trip. Was that right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh my God. yeah I, I, I mountain bike there almost every morning and uh, between the rabbits and the deer. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, good ride. Yeah. I've done part of it. I actually went down White Sports too. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, mention, would Chris like to elaborate a little bit on the red, red couch, couch tour? Uh, has everybody read? I'm asking questions for you, Danny. You, <laughs> go, ahead. you go ahead. Has everybody read the, the email that we got pertaining to mm -hmm. that? The couch. And I emailed Chris that weekend. I'm covering for my boss, trucking boss, so I'll be in charge. And I can't take that Friday off because I can't forecast whether we're going to have hair on that time and besides I'm not comfortable doing that kind of thing and so I suggested Calvin but that's up to whoever's mm -hmm. in charge of this to, to to put somebody in my place but I mean we'll let you guys handle that so that is actually taking place it's been it's it's booked it's that's correct so we're scheduled one, we're one of the stops on the pan canadian mm -hmm. red couch tour yeah. um, we're the only though. rural area in the province um, they're also going to halifax twice and sydney um, so it's it's actually quite interesting mm -hmm. it um, is that we're, we're one of the stops um, if you look at all the other cities across canada exactly. that they're stopping at um, so it is very interesting they'll have 20 um, red couched interviews i guess 60 yeah. seconds long um, of asking people what uh, Canada means to them. Yeah. So that'll be July 7th and it'll be at the Dennis Point Wharf. But they couldn't possibly use every 21 minute segment for every stop across Canada, could they, on their wherever they're going to broadcast? So it? afterwards, as, as it explained, they'll be making a video and they won't be using everyone's, of no. course, or, or, or the full length of everyone's. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they use it for different uses as well. July 7th? July 7th, yeah, it's next Friday. At your wharf. At my wharf, at my spot, yeah. So as Richard mentioned, <laughs> if we do, they have asked us to create a list of people that they will be asking that question to create those those clips. Um, if you do have any suggestions, as Charlene mentioned, just uh, send them off to her and, and she'll, um, yes. along with other people, will kind of look through the list and, and pick the, the best ones. No, very interesting. Very, very good to, yes. to have them stop, mm -hmm. stop by here. Any other questions on any of the other ones? If not, we'll move on. Financial requests. First one is the West Pubnico Athletic Association. And that would be to... For me? Calvin. So... Let me just fire it up here. So the West Pawnee Hill Athletic Association is a nonprofit organized within your municipal district, and we are asking, uh, I guess, myself, the councillor, for a grant of five hundred dollars to help with costs of maintaining the existing ball field. And I guess the, the cost of maintaining this year is uh, one of the costs of maintaining is a porta potty that they, uh, they installed, uh, I guess, last week sometime. There. So uh, we'll be uh, using that money, the five hundred dollars plus uh, a little bit of money from from the minor baseball uh, teams that got money from the municipality to pay for that. So apparently it's already been used, so. Okay. So are you moving that? Yes, I'm moving that. <laughs> yeah, I'll second that. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aren't you minded? Yes, it is kind of moving, isn't it? <laughs> it is moving. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to walk that one off. Pumnico Point Trail Association. That's uh, you again, <laughs> Councilor Dr. Oh, yeah, yeah. well, what did I do to this? Oh, there we go. So the 
Pamlico Point Trail, which I just talked about, uh, has uh, they have almost completed. But I guess phase two uh, is just a matter of putting uh, signs, and they're working on phase three. But we're looking for a district community grant of five hundred dollars again to to help uh, uh, the completion and maintenance, and we'll add gravel along the old trail and signs in the new. So and I'll move that. Make that a motion. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Contraminded. Carried. East Pubnico Playground, and that would be Council Board. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to move that we give uh, $500 to the East Pubnico Playground, and that's to uh, help them uh, put pea gravel and, and fix the, the box, sand boxes. And you move that. Um, okay. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contraminded. Aye. Carried. And the Pubnico Light Monument Society. And that went to, 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 to whom? <laughs> whom may <mine>. concern. <laughs> um, that place there is uh, well visited during the summer months, July and August especially, and uh, we always put a porter potty there, so they're asking to, for $500. So I meant that we give $500 to pay for the porter potty. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contraminded. Carried. We're moving right along. Uh, Agenda. Yeah. <laughs> well, did you have something? No. <laughs> I was late on my eye. Oh. Agenda topics for next meeting or notice of motion. We don't even know when that is. We don't even know when that is. Question period. Is it nothing on? Nothing on the line. Wow. Is anybody watching? Okay. No. Oh. <laughs> So we now have an in-camera session. So, so move to go in camera. Move to go in camera. Second. And I guess we vote on that. All in favor? Aye.